So today in this lecture we are going to discuss the arterial pressure pulsations. It's going to be a very simple and easy topic. We have previously discussed the uh, characteristics of the blood vessels like uh, distensibility, the ability of the blood vessel to dilate and then we have discussed the compliance of the blood vessels uh, that was uh, actually the uh, the ability of the blood vessel to accumulate the blood volume of blood for increasing pressure and then we also discussed the volume pressure curve uh, that how the increasing volume of blood affect the pressure in the arteries and veins. Now the same uh, compliance and distensibility uh, f will be discussed here and their application will be discussed in arterial pressure pulsation that how the compliance and distensibility of the blood vessels help in the blood flow in the arterial pulsation. Now if we see that during the uh, normal heartbeat during normal heartbeat with each heartbeat pressure in the arteries rise that is known as systolic pressure systolic pressure and then falls that is known as diastolic pressure this is for example the heart and the simple function of the heart is that the left ventricle of the heart is pumping the blood into the whole of the body that the, here in the body the body utilizes the blood uh, the uh, active component of the blood and then the deoxygenated blood returns to the right atrium of the heart from the right atrium the blood goes into the right ventricle from the right atrium the blood goes into the lungs where it get oxygenated and from the lungs it comes back to the left atrium and from the left atrium it goes back to the left ventricle and from here it goes into the body again that's something we have discussed it again and again but the way the heart is pumping the blood it is in uh, continuous heartbeats when the heart pumps the blood this is known as systole when the heart pumps the blood it is known as systole and at the moment of systole the pressure generated in the blood vessels here in these arteries it is known as systolic pressure and this pressure is a little um, a little bit higher than diastolic pressure diastole is basically when the heart relax the heart pumps the blood and that it relaxes pumps the blood and then it gets relaxes when it pumps uh, or when it contracts it is known as systole and when it gets relaxed it is known as diastole. So the pressure in the blood vessels in the contraction or in the systole is known as systolic pressure and the pressure in the relaxation uh, process or their uh, diastole is known as diastolic pressure. But the blood flows both in the systole and diastole due to compliance with minimal pulsation. Now the important thing is that heart is pumping only blood in systole but blood is flowing here both in the systole and in the diastole when the heart is relaxing still the blood is flowing here. Ideally if the blood vessels would not be compliant if they would not be compliant an ability uh, to accommodate the blood and if the blood vessels would not get dilate or if they would not have the property of distensibility then the blood would be flowing only in the contraction process only in the systole and it would not be flowing in the diastole but blood flows both in the systole and diastole due to the compliance due to the compliance with minimal pulsations now the the ability of the blood vessels to dilate and increase the pressure and then slowly decrease the pressure while the and while allowing the blood to flow smoothly it is due to the compliance and the distensibility of the blood vessels when the pressure in the vessels is high that is the systolic pressure and when the pressure in, is in the vessels is low that is the diastolic pressure the difference between these two pressures is known as pulse pressure the difference between two pressures is called the pulse pressure now here we have the graphic representation of the systole diastole and the pulse pressure here we can see here the heart starts pumping and when it has reach the full contraction process the pressure in the arteries have increased 
and at this point it has reached around 120 level normally this is the systolic pressure now when the blood the heart relaxes in the diastole the pressure in the vessels basically it falls it falls and it falls to around 80 it falls to around 80 now the difference between this systolic and the diastolic pressure is known as the pulse pressure this is the pulse pressure and this pressure is basically allowing the arterial pressure pulsations in the blood vessels but the blood vessels these blood vessels they are trying to minimize minimal pulsation they are trying to minimize the pulsation so that when the blood reaches the capillaries it should not be pulsating the bl the blood vessels especially the capillaries should not be pulsa uh, pulsating and the blood should be flowing smoothly and the the main purpose of the whole process is to allow smooth blood flow and that is due to the compliance and distensibility of the blood vessels but still due to the systolic pressure and diastolic pressure there comes a little bit difference so that difference normally is around 40 mm of mercury here is 120 mm of mercury here is 80 mm of mercury normally it's around the difference between these two is around 40 mm of mercury now this pulse pressure basically it's dependent upon three important factors two of them are very much important and one is a little bit less important so one important factor one important factor for the pulse pressure is stroke volume stroke volume stroke volume is basically the amount of blood the amount of blood that is pumped in one stroke when the heart contracts just one time that amount of blood which will be pumped in one uh, contraction is known as stroke volume now if the stroke volume increases the the pulse pressure the pulse pressure will increases more than 40 it will increase more than 40 and if the stroke volume decreases if the amount of blood pumped in one contraction decreases then this pulse pressure will decrease another important factor for the pulse pressure is compliance that's something which we discussed or the total distensibility of the arterial tree the total distensibility of the whole arterial tree that's another important factor which will affect the pulse pressure another third important factor which is not that much important is the character of the ejection from the heart the character of the in which way the heart is the blood is basically ejecting from the heart now we have discussed the normal pulse pressure and the normal phenomenon that how the pulse pressure get generated and what is the mechanism behind the pulse, normal pulse pressure now we are going to discuss the abnormalities that generate that comes due to some that due to some problem in the normal blood vessels or due to some problem in the normal valves or due to some problem in the pumping mechanism of the heart so the most important or of them is the arteriosclerosis now when the heart when the blood vessels when these blood vessels when they get stiff or harden when they get stiff or harden with increasing age their ability to dilate or their compliance is lost when their compliance is lost then increasing arteriosclerosis or increased hardening of the blood vessel lead to increased pulse pressure now the normal pulse pressure was coming up to 120 mm of mercury and the pulse pressure was around in the systole it was coming around 120 and the total pulse pressure was around 40 but in arteriosclerosis we have seen that it is gone more than 120 so the pulse pressure is going to increase more than 40 because the vessels have begun become hardened the, the the walls of the blood vessels are stiff and they are not accommodating the blood they they are not uh, able to dilate easily so because the factors the compliance and stroke volume and character of ejection are important here in arteriosclerosis 
the compliance is the 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 decrease in compliance the decrease in distensibility is leading to increase pulse pressure in increase in pulse pressure now another abnormality is aortic stenosis aortic stenosis is when the the valve the aortic valve here is the left ventricle and it is basically pumping the blood in the aorta but at the start of aorta here we have a valve that is known as aortic valve when did this vessels normally it's like this in the aortic stenosis its size decreases to this much when the size of the valve is decreased due to some abnormality the flow of blood in this valve is decreased the flow of blood due to, in this valve is decreased so the stroke volume decreases the stroke volume decreases due to which the pulse pressure has decreased here you see the pulse pressure is decreased normally it should be like this it should come to around 120 mm of mercury but in aortic stenosis due to loss of volume in the valve or decreased diameter of the valve the stroke volume or the amount of blood that is going out has decreased so the pulse pressure has decreased now another factor is that will affect the pulse pressure is pda or patent ductus arteriosus in patent ductus arteriosus or pda there is an abnormal connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta in the pulmonary artery and, and aorta in this connect in this abnormality blood from the aorta will go directly into the pulmonary artery when blood is going into the pulmonary artery the blood basically the volume of blood in the aorta basically decreases it decreases so when there is sudden decrease in the volume of blood the normal the normal the diastolic the diastolic pressure in the vessel the diastolic pressure in the vessel it falls below 80 normally it should be around 80 but in pda it is going to 40 so it is falling below this 80 level up to 40 which leads to increase in pulse pressure the pulse pressure has basically widened because the diastolic pressure has fallen below the 80 now the difference between 40 and 120 is very much high this is leading to a high pulse pressure because of loss of blood because of sudden loss of blood from the aorta into the pulmonary artery now another important factor which uh, with abnormal pulse pressure is aortic regurg aortic regurg in the aortic regurg these valves the aortic valve which is basically present at the start of aorta this valve is incompetent and it is unable to close it is unable to close directly and it is unable to prevent the the backward flow of blood when the heart normally contracts it pumps the blood into the aorta but due to high pressure due to high pressure some of the blood is coming back towards the left ventricle and this well normally will not allow this oh, this blood to come back but when the well is incompetent the well is incompetent it will allow more blood to come back it will allow more blood to come back so the pressure in the blood vessel will fall not only to 40 but it will fall almost to 0 normally the pressure should be between 80 and 120 in pda the pressure is falling below the 80 level it is falling till 40 we are just assuming that it is falling up to 40 level 40 mm of mercury it may fall up to 50 or 30 whatever and in aortic regurg a lot of blood is coming backward here so the diastolic pressure may fall up to 0 so this is again increasing the difference between diastolic and systolic pressure and leading to a high pulse pressure difference apart from that this incisura this incisura this incisura 
this incisura, it is lost here. The incisura basically shows that when the blood comes back, suddenly the aortic valve stops the blood normally and when the pressure is decreasing and here it is stopped, suddenly there is an increase in pressure because the valves close, the aortic valve is normally closed and it prevents the backward flow. So suddenly there is a, there is a stop of a decrease, there is a loss of decrease in pressure and the pressure suddenly uh, increases and it gives rise to an incisura, incisura, incisura. This incisura is lost here because the valve is incompetent. It will not be able to stop the backward flow of blood. So there will be no incisura and the diastolic pressure will be falling up to zero mark which will lead to a lot of uh, a big pulse pressure difference. So the arterial pressure pulsation or the pulse pressure basically is the difference between systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. Normally this pressure should be around 40 mm of mercury and the factors that play a big role in determining the pulse pressure is stroke volume of the heart, compliance of the heart and character of ejection from the heart. And the factors which basically lead to abnormal pulse pressure, they may include arteriosclerosis which will lead to loss of compliance, aortic stenosis which will lead to low stroke volume and PDA which will also lead to low uh, decrease in volume of blood in the vessels and will basically decrease the diastolic pressure and then the aortic regurge which basically will not be able to stop the backward flow of blood and there will be sudden decrease in the pulse pressure uh, the diastolic pressure which will basically give rise to a big a big uh, pulse pressure so that's all about the pulse pressure the systolic pressure the diastolic pressure and the factors affecting the pulse pressure and the normal and abnormal pulse pressure in different conditions thanks a lot for watching the video